Hi, I'm John Maida, and I'm going to walk you through a few pages in the Design and Tech Report. The third page we'll talk about is AI and its relationship to design. It turns out that AI is getting mighty intelligent these days. It can do all sorts of things. Are there things it cannot do? Definitely. The one thing it cannot do is feel. Feeling is a thing that we're really good as human beings. Machines are good at faking feeling, like saying, um, and hi, and using intonation and things like that. But deep inside, they don't have the capacity to feel yet. That's what some science fiction people will tell you is coming, or some technology experts will tell you is coming. And it's not here right now. So thank goodness feelings are still our stuff. When we think about artificial intelligence and just in general computers making images, we can look back to the work of A. Michael Knoll, who in the 60s had an experiment where he showed a Mondrian and a fake Mondrian and did a A-B test, basically. Which one is the best art? Turns out that his own artwork was the best and... <laughs> It's a funny story about computer art from the 60s, but it's kind of interesting because and when we think about how this image over here, if you paid an artist to fill in details, it's kind of a, not a great task to do, but an artist could do it, but a computer can do this, which is a pretty good approximation. So when you think about it, the computer is just getting better at doing things that we don't like to do. Uh, another example removing the watermark from a uh, stock photo. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Being able to get contrast perfect. That's kind of a hard thing, but you know, if, do you want to do it all the time? Can you create variations when someone shows you a few examples? Is that uh, something you want to spend your time doing? Probably not, but AI can do that. Can you resynthesize styles? This is pretty wild work from NVIDIA. Taking a snow swept thing, with a black and white photo and making a the black and white photo snow swept. A little creepy. Adding expressions to someone's face. Not a nice thing to do, but very possible, uh, even by yourself. But a computer seems to do it really well. Or at least uh, likes to do it, at least. And lastly, as you know, the ability to correct drawings is something that computers are just getting better at doing if you consider how it can correct our writing and figure out what letters are being written. That's a problem we've been looking at since the... 70s, 80s, and, and actually that hasn't been fully solved, but it's a, uh, a great problem for anyone to wonder about. And lastly, uh, what do we think is fake anymore is kind of hard to figure out. And this new technology that lets you easily construct images that are hard to make by hand will make us wonder what we see. Is it really real or not? A computer can do more than just copy us, it can also synthesize if we give them enough rules. I said them, huh, interesting. Well, when we give computers the ability to synthesize, they can make interesting things. This is an example in the early 2000s by Kram and Weishar, using a genetic algorithm to synthesize different tables. Now we can do everything from synthesize a dress to synthesize a video game to designing a house. This is all possible today with AI. And if you're wondering how not to be afraid of it, just learn about it. So this is a great resource by uh, Fernanda Viegas and her partners. One of my favorite examples of how AI is advancing is listening to Siri in iOS 9. One liter is 33.81 fluid ounces. And just two versions later, this is iOS 11. One liter is 33.81 fluid ounces. Whoa, AI improved. Well done, AI. Thanks for checking out this three-part series. It was an experiment to see how I can make the design and tech report a little more understandable. And it was also good for me. So thanks for dropping by. <music>